So once you've got your, your float coat on either onto your walls or onto your laths, you then need to level those walls out. So with the lath, I would leave them as they are. I wouldn't do much with them. But on this second coat now, I want to make this flat. Or at least I want to compress any cracks that appear. And the traditional way of doing that was either with a straight-grained wooden float or a cross-grained wooden float. The straight-grained uh, will allow for undulations. So if I wanted a, a finish where I didn't necessarily want it too flat and I wanted to follow the contours of the wall, then I'd go with a straight-grained wooden float. If, however, I wanted to make something really flat, then I'd use a cross-grain wooden float. And the reason is, is that with straight-grain wooden floats, they tend to uh, erode on the edges. And then it means that you can follow the, the walls, whereas with a cross-grain, it doesn't at all. And actually, it's a very uh, uncompromising, unforgiving surface. And it just takes all of the high points off and it leaves the low points exposed. The time to float is not when you've just laid the material on the wall. This is just too soft still. So if I started working this, my float is just sticking and digging into the wall. And this is the problem, if you like, or the, the craft behind plastering, especially lime plastering, especially traditional three coat work. Because you have to be around when the plaster's ready to do the next technique. So if I, for example, laid this on on a Friday night and then went home for the weekend and came back on the Monday, this may have cracked and it may have gone too hard for me to do anything with. So you need to get your timing right. and You need to think about, are you going to be there the next day and the next day? So this here was laid on 24 hours ago. And you can see on the tops here, there's some shrinkage. These cracks have appeared. And you can see that I've already gone over this just at the end of the day yesterday, just to open up the surface. And what I want to do is I want to get some air into the plaster because I want this plaster to carbonate. I need the air to get into that plaster to turn it back into calcium carbonate. So with that, I went over just with a, a black sponge float. And all I did was I sprayed the wall down and just worked, worked it back and opened up the surface. Now, today, you know, someone might say this is an acceptable finish for an external render, for example. Um, perfectly fine for outside. Um, even, even as a kind of cottagey finish, it's absolutely fine. But if you wanted to really go and have a very nice, flat, smooth wall, then I would go over this again with a float. So the first thing I'd do is I'd spray it down a little bit. You can see here, perhaps, where it's lightening up a bit. That's actually where it's starting to, to, to go off, to set, to carbonate. So I just want to get a, a bit of a drink. Let that suck in a little bit. And this is where it's all about timing. And you can see often when you spray is when the cracks sometimes show themselves. So I've got a crack here, 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 and up there, like I said. Um, and funnily enough, I don't really have a crack where I went over it with, um, with that black float. Where I do have the cracks is down below where I didn't because it was just a bit too wet at the time to go over. So I'm going to use, I'll try the cross grain float first. And this is quite a physical process. You have to really start to work the plaster back. And what I'm doing, I'm just going to get a bit more water.
kind of brush. So another bit of water, it means it makes it a bit more workable on the surface. I'm actually floating this back and I'm putting my, I'm actually right handed, but even with the left hand, I'm pushing the full weight of my body behind, just levelling this wall out. And where I might get a little hole where, say, the aggregates just made a little hole, you just work that back in. And this process of floating back with a wooden float is key to getting a good lime plaster because I'm compressing the plaster down, I'm compressing the cracks and opening up the surface and I'm also flattening the surface. <laughs>